The term white monopoly capital was used regularly during former President Jacob Zuma's era. Does it ring a bell? Well, it should. It came from Bell Pottinger, the controversial UK-based public relations and reputation management firm that was hired by the Gupta family. Now, a feature-length documentary, Influence, which is co-directed by Diana Neal and Richard Poplack, examines the rise and the fall of that company. It probed Lord Timothy Bell, the founder of the company, who some consider to be the godfather of spin doctrine. I'll be speaking to Diana and Richard in just a moment. First, here's the trailer for you. <coughs> and I've had just about every piece of filth written about me. I just think maybe if I just told the truth for once, told the whole story, maybe I'll be better judged. The story of Tim Bell is really the story of influence over the last 50 years. They found it about Pottinger, Tim Bell. The great Tim Bell, Lord Bell, who was Mrs. Thatcher's favourite ad man, masterminded her three election victories. I didn't really know what I was good at, but I was a good salesman. Now you moved advertising into a workable weapon. This was the beginning of a very new and burgeoning industry. They keep on saying he worked for Pinochet. I did not. I never met Pinochet. But well, you, did, you did meet him? I did meet him. I met him in, ten years earlier in, um, in uh, Santiago. Are we allowed to know all your clients? Um, you can know all those except, unfortunately, the government. A $500 million contract in Iraq. As a journalist, you start thinking, what's happening here? Something's not okay. What went wrong? The British public relations company, Bell Pottinger, stands accused of fomenting racial tensions in post-apartheid South Africa. You know, this is a perfect environment to influence narratives and play on fear. I'm going up against one of the biggest PR firms in the world. And we begin to excavate the rot, the truth. Foreign leaders and dictators, big corporations, Russian oligarchs. He's the guy behind the scenes can fix it. Is this how the world works? It's one of the ways the world works. Go anywhere, do anything was very much the bumper sticker. Well, that's the trailer for Influence, uh, co-directed by Diana Neal and Richard Poplack. Worth mentioning as well, uh, we are going to be airing that, uh, that film tonight here on ENCA, uh, 9 p.m. tonight. Also repeating it on Friday the 13th uh, at 9 p.m. as well. All right, Diana Neal and Richard Poplack, good morning to uh, both of you joining us. Diana, I'll start with you if I can. Weaponized communication. I've never heard that turn of phrase before. I love the way the website's been built and congratulations on all the awards. Weaponized communication. Uh, that's the world we live in now, isn't it? It is indeed, Gareth, and it's a term that, uh, that, we've, that we've found has become almost passe these days. Uh, certainly since 2016, I think, was a seminal year for the, uh, for the establishment of weaponized communication in the contemporary sense. Of course, disinformation is nothing new. It's a, a trait as old as, as humans. Um, but certainly, I think uh, the, the work that Tim Bell was, uh, was pi pioneered throughout his career uh, was very much about how to, um, how to do exactly that, how to weaponize information, how to manipulate people uh, within democratic processes and without um, you know, on behalf of multinationals, on behalf of some senior political figures around the world over the last 40 years. And certainly being able to map his, the trajectory of his career has given us a really good understanding of, of how this phenomenon has come mm. about. Uh, Richard Poplack, speak to me a little bit. First of all, congratulations to you as well. I did congratulate Diane, uh, Diana about this. I, I, I'm curious about the access that uh, you would have had to try and get and, and the investigation into this, bearing in mind that Tim Bell himself is, is a master of spinning the rhetoric, yet you were able to dig out the facts uh, from his early years all the way to now. I can't imagine uh, the, the momentous uh, work that went into researching a spin doctor of his caliber and getting it factually correct. 
Yeah, it was uh, it was a huge task. We had a couple of very good researchers who worked alongside us, um, but uh, Diane and I did uh, on, on and off along with our research team probably 18 months worth of research. Um, the, the spine of the film is is sort of defined uh, by uh, 25 hours of sit down exclusive interviews that we conducted with Lord Bell himself uh, at the beginning of 2018. Um, and uh, th those th 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 that series of interviews really uh, was completely revelatory. Um, of course, we had to double, triple, sometimes quadruple uh, sources with regard to a lot of the stuff that he said. He is not a man who is particularly, um, shall we say, truthful all the time. But nonetheless, um, that 25-hour interview process, mm -hmm. which forms the core of the film, um, has proved to be a very, very rich mine of information uh, mm -hmm. that not just ourselves as journalists are using, but other journalists around the, the world are using as well. The man lived an extraordinary life. Uh, Diana, let me come back to you for a moment. When I saw the trailer, one of the first things that stood out is for a man who has the reputation that he has as Tim Bell, why do you think he was willing to do this? a great question and it's something we've asked ourselves many times Gareth uh, you know we, we weren't really sure how he would respond to to us going and asking for his permission uh, Richard was uh, was the one who was uh, dispatched to London to go and, and get that permission uh, certainly he's someone who has been who has enjoyed the public eye for a long time given uh, his associations from a young age uh, you know as as the film shows he worked very closely with Margaret Thatcher um, he was known to be someone who enjoyed um, attention, um, fast cars, um, pretty ladies, you know, the usual uh, London scene. Uh, so certainly we, we, were, we weren't sure how he would respond. Uh, and the message really was, you know, this film is going ahead. We're making it with or without your participation. Uh, we certainly uh, advise or, or would, would love to have your involvement uh, and believe that it would be in your best interest mm. to tell your own story. Um, and that was what we proceeded to do um, with his permission, as Richard said, for five days. Uh, we just sat and, and listened to the man talk. Uh, and I think, uh, well, I certainly would have been a much less interesting project, I think, had we not had, uh, had it from, uh, from the horse's mouth, yeah. as, it, as it were. Richard, let me, let me come to you. Uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing the film tonight, 9 p.m. Uh, here on ENCA. I can't help but wonder, and perhaps I'm being overly cynical here, and tell me if I am, how do you know that you and Diana weren't being spinned by him in the film talking about his spin doctrine? Well, first of all, I advise that you pour yourself a very stiff drink when you sit down <laughs> and watch the film. Uh, it's, uh, it, you'll need it. Uh, second, uh, of course, that was our first uh, instinct. Our first instinct was that we're spinning down, uh, sitting down with one of the pioneers of uh, weaponized misinformation, um, certainly in the Western context. The second was that uh, this was a man who loved to play. He loved to pit himself against journalists with whom he felt sat on the other side of the ideological divide and bat them uh, around like a, like a cat with a mouse. Uh, that said, um, as I mentioned earlier, we were very, very careful to go in uh, as, as researched and prepared as we possibly could be. Um, and we took not a single word the man said on face value. So uh, unless we could double source what he said using the same ethics and same techniques that journalists or real journalists use all over the world, I know that all of a sudden fact checking seems to be out of fashion, but it was not out of fashion uh, with us making this film. So we were very careful about not putting lies uh, on, on film. And if there were lies on film, and he did lie often, uh, frequently, and uh, robustly, uh, we, we were sure to catch him out when he did so. Uh, Diana, I'm going to leave the last answer to you as briefly as you could, because I need to ask this. It's going to help uh, viewers understand the, the local reason and the importance of the story that we're going to air tonight. Uh, the Gupta family hired him. We've heard the Gupta family being mentioned in the state capture along with uh, former President Jacob Zuma. Speak to me about the Gupta link uh, as briefly as you can before I say goodbye. I will, Gareth. Uh, the Gupta link, I think, is one that's very well known to many South Africans and it certainly is made clear in this film. But I will say there's a, there's a couple of even more interesting and, and perhaps unknown elements to an earlier part of our history that I think is very important to South Africans that I would urge uh, viewers to tune in for. Uh, might be a bit revelatory. So... Hopefully that's a bit of an incentive.
Uh, it really is in a great incentive as well. Diana Neal and Richard Poplack, congratulations to both of you. Influence uh, the film tonight at 9 p.m. here on ENCA. It's a beautifully shot film, The Rise and Fall of the World's Most Dangerous Public Relations Company, Bell Pottinger.